Look at that. Last time I powder coated my valve cover and then disappeared. This time, we're installing the cylinder head. To start, I'm cleaning my head studs of any contamination or rust inhibitors using coffee filters and alcohol. Now we clean the mating surface of the cylinder head and the engine block using the same method. My machine shop returned the cylinder head to me with the valves in it, so we're not going to see any of that assembly. Now we take the head studs and throw them in hand tight. I bought new dowels for the cylinder head since the old ones were a little beat up and they're easy to replace. These dowels play a crucial role in making sure the cylinder head and the engine block are aligned. The holes for the studs in the cylinder head are bored to a larger diameter, so we need the dowels to get rid of any play. Now install the cylinder head only to remember that you forgot to place the head gasket. Now that I remembered the head gasket, it's a good time to go over why the thickness you choose matters. If we take a look at our assembly, we have the piston, engine block, head gasket, and cylinder head. The compression ratio of a motor is a ratio of the volume of the cylinder when the piston is at the bottom of the stroke, bottom dead center, and when the piston is the top of the stroke, top dead center. When I took the block and cylinder head to the machine shop, they decked the surface of the cylinder head, which means they remove material to flatten it out. So if originally, at bottom dead center, my cylinder was 10 units of volume, and at top dead center, it was 2 units of volume, this gives me a compression ratio of 5. Now if we remove material from the cylinder head, we see the volume change. Let's say that we removed 1 unit of volume from both. We see that the ratio increases. It went from a 5 to a 9. A way to get around this is to use a thicker head gasket to make up the difference from the material removed. This has its limitations, but in my case, only six thousandths of an inch was removed, so my head gasket is only six thousandths thicker. Now that we have the proper head gasket and we didn't forget about it, we can install the cylinder head. Now we take a recommended thread lubricant and apply it to both sides of the head stud washers and put one in each stud. Now place some thread lubricant on each of the threads. If you're interested in why we do this, check out my video on the piston install where I go into depth on why thread lubricant is crucial. The manufacturer of the head studs calls out the head to be torqued in three equal steps. So I did 30, 60, and 80 foot-pounds. Make sure to torque them in the sequence called out by the manufacturer. This reduces the risk of an improper seal or any warping. Next we're going to clean the surface on the cylinder head and apply Honda Bond to the specified area so we can install our rock arm assembly. Carefully align the dowels and place the rock arm assembly on the cylinder head. Carefully tap it with a rubber mallet to ensure the rocker is fully seated. Take the cam caps and place them on the rocker assembly. These cam caps are numbered and have a specific orientation, so make sure to pay attention to the markings on top of them. I managed to break a bolt right in the cylinder head. I used a bolt extractor, which is a hardened piece of metal with a tapered left hand to thread. You pre-drill a hole and since it's self-tapping, it'll eventually bottom out. If you're lucky, you'll start unscrewing the broken bolt. Now we need to remove the rocker assembly, clean the dried Honda Bond, and reapply it. I decide to only torque down the cap with the Honda Bond since I have caveman hands. After the Honda Bond dries, we can start to add lubrication to the rocker assembly. Remember, we want to avoid metal on metal contact, so be pretty liberal with it.
Before installing the cams, we need to make sure that the bearing surfaces are clean. After cleaning, now we can make a mess and add lubrication to the cam bearings, rocker assembly, and the camshafts themselves. Carefully place the cams aligning the bearing surfaces. If the camshaft isn't sitting quite flat, carefully rotate it until the orientation of the lobes allow for a better fitment. Clean and lubricate the cam caps like we did the rest of the assembly. Place the caps in the order and orientation shown by the engravings on the top of them. The fasteners used here are not all identical and have specific locations. Make sure to follow the manufacturer's guidelines for the placement along with the torque spec and sequence. That wraps up the installation of the cylinder head. Next time we're going to time the motor and make the same exact mistake again. Thanks for watching and take care.